Good morning. Welcome to my backyard again. It's a little nicer out. Got a little different shot of the patio. And it is great to be out here and feel the warmth of the sun and uh, to be outside and enjoy God's creation. So yesterday we talked about hope. And the, the desire was that you would be able to fill up your love tank and your hope tank with the uh, love of Christ. That even in the midst of dire situations, violence, uh, fear, anxiety, uh, not knowing what's going to be next, that um, we have hope in the Lord. And we've seen thousands of years of followers of Christ who have gone through uh, extreme difficulties, oppression, persecution, and uh, being outcast. And yet, um, they, they endured because, pardon me, they endured because the hope they had in Christ. This no-so hope, this bank my life, my eternity on hope, that Jesus is our eternal protector, and that while we live in a broken and sinful world that's riddled with, with hatred and violence, illness, disease, and the things that can work to tear us apart, that Jesus is there to be our center, to be the one that holds us together as individuals and as a body of believers. So today I thought it would be important to talk about um, death. Unfortunately, we've seen a lot of it with uh, coronavirus. Many of you have, uh, well, hey Linda, good morning. Uh, many of you, uh, hi Valerie, good morning. Oh, and Danny too, good morning. Um, many of you have uh, suffered, uh, hey Edna, have uh, suffered loss of a loved one and uh, and now it seems like it's right in our face that, that our family members uh, or friends or someone we know who knows somebody has died from coronavirus and, and it seems to have overshadowed some of the other ways in which people die. But the fact is, is that many of you and uh, many, many who will tune in later um, have suffered the grief of having to bury a loved one. So I wanted to bring this to you. I, I preach this often at Christian funerals. Now, I have done many funerals for people outside the church. And uh, if I don't know if that, what that person believed, I can't, I can't share this in good conscience. I can't give people false hope. But for those people that I know um, have been saved by the grace of God through Christ's payment on the cross for us, I can read this passage. This comes from the Apostle Paul, the first letter to the Thessalonians. It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. Paul says, We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers. And this would be brothers and sisters. He's addressing the Christian family. Hey, Norris. Hey, Arlene. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, concerning those who are asleep, meaning those who have died, so that you will not grieve like the rest who have no hope. Since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, in the same way, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep through Jesus. Meaning those who have believed and, and received salvation through Christ. Those people who died, it is, we go into verse 15 now, keeping in mind that these are Christians who have passed away. For we say this to you by a revelation from the Lord. We who are still alive at the Lord's coming will certainly have no advantage over those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the arch archangel's voice, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are still alive will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we, always will, we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, verse 18 encourage one another with these words. So as we hear the lawnmower in the background, I apologize, bad timing on my part, or the neighbor's part, one of the two. I'm encouraging you with these words, that your loved ones who, who died in Christ will rise again. We will see them again. And think about this, for the millions of Christians who have laid down their life for Christ, and for the millions of Christians who have lived lives and died of natural death, not, not being persecuted, not being tortured and killed. Think of the family, <coughs> excuse me, 
the family reunion we're going to have with brothers and sisters in Christ of every every skin color there will be a rainbow of skin colors that we will be able to rejoice with that we will be able to celebrate with there will be a multitude an uncounted multitude of people who have died in Christ from Adam and Eve until the last day I'm encouraging you in these words they're not mine they're written under inspiration through the Apostle Paul for us today. That even in the face, face of an enormous death, even in the face of death that comes not by coronavirus, that for the Christian, we have hope after death. And that if our loved ones have died in the Lord, then we have hope not only in our own salvation, but we have hope that we will see them once again. Paul, let's go back. Paul says this, he doesn't want us to be uninformed concerning those who fall asleep so that you will not grieve like the rest who have no hope. And see, Christians grieve differently. We grieve with hope. And, and to an unbelieving world, that sounds oxymoronic. It sounds foolish. But we are people of hope. Paul says we grieve differently. It's bittersweet for the Christian. For our family members who have died in the Lord, it's bitter because we miss them. And we long to be with them again. The tears that flow from death are, are pictures of life well lived. Those tears mean something. But for those who have died not in the Lord, their family's grief is much different. Because Paul says there's no hope. There's no hope of the resurrection. There's no hope of life after death. There's, there's no hope of meeting the Lord in the air or being raised first and then watching our family members who are alive and remain be called up into the clouds and meet the Lord and so we will ever be with the Lord. We have hope in a hopeless situation, in living in a broken and painful world sometimes. We can still rejoice. We can rejoice in the good times. We rejoice in the horrific, ugly times because we have hope. And sometimes that hope is hard fought. When we look at the face of what we're facing individually, not just today, but but beyond COVID-19 and beyond what the next thing is. Paul reminds us that we are people of hope. And that hope is in Jesus Christ, who died for our sin and who has promised that we will be with him forever, that we will not be separated from him. And for our loved ones, our friends, our family, who have died in the Lord, we will be reunited with them. Friends, bank on that. Cling to that. Let the tears come. If you're in mourning, be in mourning. Don't let anybody tell you when you need to be over something. Human life is not something to get over. But cling the hope that is in this world. Not what some pastor says, but what God's word says to each and every one of us. Let's pray. Gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of our no-so hope. Thank you that you have made it clear that you are the only way of salvation and that Jesus, through you, our believing family members will be reunited with us. Which also, Lord, we cry out to you and ask you to help us be better evangelists. Help us to better share your message so that not only our family and friends would know you, but a lost and hopeless people 
who don't know you might through our testimony cling to you, receive forgiveness, and know that they have a seat at your heavenly banquet. Father, we cannot do it without you. Jesus, you must help us be your ambassadors here on earth in all situations. And we rejoice in this hope that can never be taken away. We thank you, Jesus, and we love you. We pray all of this in your name. Amen. Amen. Hey, Nancy, good morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus is right. Friends, walk today in the hope that only comes from Christ, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Enjoy this beautiful day, at least in Plano. I don't know where what it's like in Texas or Indiana or Florida, but right now it is absolutely gorgeous. So enjoy this day wherever you're at, resting in Christ's hope, and we'll see you tomorrow.